NASA greenhouse update. It's the 8th of July and I'm about to make some changes in here. We'll go over everything real quick. Um, 4th, of, 4th of July, a few days ago, I came back. We were at a campground, Marmel Park, and I came back um, on the 4th of July to check on everything and uh, did some winds, had really high winds and did some damage. I'll show you that on my carport. High winds did some real damage. The whole thing is leaning. But in here, everything was pretty much okay. I had uh, some of these plants had blown over and I had to put some back, but I'm really surprised that the wind could do such damage to the carport and this flimsy three quarter inch EMT uh, did just fine. I mean, there was, I've seen it flex quite a bit. So that's probably the key to why it's still good and still um, stable and still here basically. But anyway, let's look at uh, what's going on here. You can see the um, broccoli and the water culture beds are doing really good still. Lots of new leaves, lots of growth. I've even got some down there that have a almost like a small head they've attempted to grow so much. Over here I planted some tomatoes, some more cabbage, and some um, cucumber. I'm not sure how well the cabbage is going to come, going to grow, but I've also got some broccoli I want to plug in. Uh, so that's that's what I'm going to do here. Probably I could continue to do this, these broccoli harvests after I do this one. It'll be the sixth harvest on these, but uh, I think I want to plug some new broccoli in there. Some green sprouting broccoli I need to put into the water culture bed. In the water culture bed, I have this squash here it's more or less a zucchini something I'm working on and it's a wonderful tasting fruit this is self this is a baby and it's really really big and aggressive um, which is what I like and a lot a lot of branching but you can also if you have it in the greenhouse you can also trim it to one stem like I did here and matter of fact, I've got a female that I need to pollinate using a male flower. I'll go ahead and do that now. So I pulled off a male flower and I removed the petals. And all you have to do is get it in here and just touch the female parts with the pollen from the male here. All over it like that that's all you got to do it's best if you do it before um, i'd say 11. somewhere between 8 and 10 is best if you look down here kind of at this broccoli i've taken some broccoli from it including the main head in there and uh, it's just gotten kind of mad and it put out a major side shoot with a pretty good size head here if you look compared to my hand and it kind of did the same thing over here so this broccoli is not giving up at all and I may leave one or two plants in here just to see how long I can continue to do this. We'll see. It's getting really hot in the greenhouse now. I mean really hot. So uh, the tomatoes are getting to where they're not fruiting. Um, the flowers aren't dropping the pollen but anyway we do have some stuff going on still. On this side, we've got the sweet potatoes. I've got two pots of that still, and those just need to be harvested. It doesn't seem like they're ever gonna die back. In fact, they've grown all over the ground and all over the water culture beds are starting to, and the other buckets and stuff like that. So I need to go ahead and pull those. I mean, it's been uh, four months or better. So uh, if they're ever gonna produce a potato, they're, they're already in the pot. So we need to go ahead and do that. And I'll do that in the next few days, within a week for sure. Um, I want to talk about this squash here. This squash uh, originated from a cross 
that a guy named Justin, who I'm friends with on a forum, uh, crossed and sent me some seed. And it, it uh, the parents of it are the lemon squash and the tatumi uh, squash. He crossed those, and what he wanted to do was get, he liked both those squashes, what he wanted to do was get a hybrid of the two and grow those out and attempt to create his own round yellow squash. And that's what line three started from uh, for me. He sent me some seed and I grew it out and uh, had some really nice fruit off of it. I just didn't quite care for the squash uh, because I'm not real fond of zucchini and it had a zucchini-like flavor to it. So um, I back crossed it to a lemon squash that I had um, and then from there it's grown out and the first time it grew out was last year and you saw that that was what I called line three so that was a lemon back cross to a lemon tatami hybrid and uh, that Justin gave to me so that's the story of Justin squash and this is the line that I'm going to carry forward uh, this particular squash is pretty stinking awesome um, it's got this is a seed squash and that's about how big it is and this is the size of the squash uh, you want to pick it about that size or smaller you can kind of see from my hand there and this thing branches like crazy puts off these little branches and everywhere it branches it puts off the little um, globe the little balls the ye little yellow gold balls everywhere and it just branches everywhere. I just really love this squash. It's aggressive and uh, the squash tastes really, really good. Here's a baby. I haven't been hand pollinating this like I should because I've got the seed squash on here. But uh, if this was out growing on the Novi garden or in another garden, this thing would be vining like crazy and it'd be lots of squash, lots of pollinated squash. So this is what I'm carrying forward. I'm very happy about it. And a shout out to Justin for sending me the seed, buddy. I appreciate it. One of the only things left on Fawn One are these two. These are seed squash from two of my yellow summer squash that I'm carrying forward. There was two more seed squash over there. I've already taken the seed from them. And these things are almost just done and done. So I need to go ahead and take those seed squash. Okay, on Fawn Two, I've got uh, my tomato and some big beef tomatoes down there um, that are still doing quite well. And I've only got one pot of potatoes. I've already done a white potato harvest. I'll put that video up sometime after this one, but I've already done that video. Um, this is the last pot of potatoes. This is also a white potato. And you can see it's not showing signs of dying off yet. So I'll probably take that pot within the next week or so as well just like the sweet potatoes this is the carrot tube experiment and the foliage is starting to get kind of well some of it's starting to die so I need to go ahead and take that and just whatever is going to happen to the carrot tube experiment I'll share that with you on this side of fawn 2 I've got two peppers You've seen this one many times. This is the Mariachi F2 I've saved seed from. And I'm not taking peppers anymore from it. I'm just letting these get really ripe to see if I can get some more seed. This is a bell pepper um, that is pretty striking. Um, we'll see how that goes. That, that came from a hybrid from some seed that was sent to me, a guy named Joe. Uh, that's from Tangerine Dream, but obviously Tangerine Dream has bell pepper in it. That's an orange bell pepper that came from that. Down here on the end, I put some potato, a potato cutting in here. I've had some success, well not success, I've had some cutting survive, not many. And I've seen where they've produced, I've had actually a couple produce, um, a couple cuttings produce a couple potatoes so I know it's possible to grow potatoes from cuttings it's just really difficult to keep the cuttings alive 
This is Fawn 3 on the very end down there. I've got the last pot of carrots that's been growing a really long time. Uh, I could take those anytime. And I've got two more uh, pots of carrots growing there. Uh, Scarlet Nantes and Dulceva. On the end down here I've got a butternut squash that has decided it's given up the ghost. And I've got the one seed squash and that's probably a part of the main reason why it's given up the ghost. That seed squash is a cross and i um, trying to create a butternut line to my liking. And then I've got Don's okra which are still putting on okra way up top. I need to trim some of these leaves back. I'd say the plants are probably seven to eight feet tall now. <laughs> this is my hand as high as I can reach from the ground and it's it's a foot or two above my hand. Anyway, okra is definitely, definitely doable. If you're just two people, all you need is two plants and one bucket, and it does real well. I've got, you've seen these many times, some sweet success cucumbers growing around this cage, and I need to obviously take and wrap them some more. It's just been really, really great experience growing cucumbers this way. Right next to it is a sweet success I'm trying to also wrap uh, new growth. We'll see how that one does. Some black cherry tomatoes are still doing really great. Black cherries do great, great, great in the heat. I'm just gonna take one and munch on it right now, which I tend to do. Well, I'm in the greenhouse. Mm. So these are the tomatoes. This is a tomato called Enormous. You can see down there the tag. I don't really care for it. It cracks too much. And it's not a great tomato. I've just been kind of uh, not taking care of it. I finally got the eggplant to grow. It's been a pitiful eggplant year. Uh, you can see there Lestata de Gandia uh, is the name of the variety. And it's growing, but it's not growing the greatest. And uh, I don't know, I might take that out. This is a zucchini that uh, the high winds on the 4th of July knocked out. It cracked it and it's, I guess it looks like it's trying to come back a little bit. Another parent in the butternut breeding that I'm doing. This one is our smaller one. You can see it's nearly ready to take. On this row, I've got some West Virginia sweet meat. You can see that's what they look like. They're really a pink and heart-shaped tomato, and they taste pretty good. They probably taste very similar to brandy wine, but I just don't care for brandy wines too much. Got some more tomatoes started there, and I've got some big zacks that are starting to turn here, and they're good size, but they're not extraordinary. You know, they're not. Oh my God, they're huge, big. But you can see them here. Pretty cool. And the fourth one here next to Snow, the adopted kitty, is a uh, my, my breeding. I'm going to call this tomato Lacey. Um, it's after one of the breeders, the name of the breeder that uh, developed the Heg German. And uh, this is a cross with the Heg German pink and the Campari at the third generation Campari, the save seed. The uh, weather got this one and it got uh, actually both of those tomatoes which is unfortunate especially since it snapped it. So I'm going to remove those. I've got the one that I'm actually saving seed from is still growing and I'm going to attempt to save that one. Down here is a plant, a potato leaf called Rebel Yell and you can see it's starting to change color here. Rebel Yell are okay. It's not all that they <laughs> that they made it out to be. It's not all that in a bag of chips, if you will. And lastly, I've got some tomato breeding tomatoes of crosses that I've made. Very, very, very interesting lines going on here. And I'll get into all that later. So, this is Brent, you guys. That's the uh, update on what's going on in the greenhouse. Um, it's getting hot, uh, more difficult to grow, worst time of the year in the upcoming month or two. 
and um, but we're gonna try to plug forward move forward start some new start see what we get um, and go from there so that's an update on the greenhouse this is Brent we'll see you later